Good day, everyone. This is Brendan Green, owner of Gold Element Auto Works, coming back at you with another video. If you read the title of this video, you see that I have another coilover job about to take place. This client is shipping his car from, from Georgia, okay, here to Cincinnati, Ohio. I had to clear some space, move some cars out the driveway and out the garage in order to get his pulled in. It's not here yet. I'm waiting for the, uh, the shipping uh, truck, the tow truck or the, uh, the carrier. I think it's going to be on one of those carriers. I'm waiting for them to arrive. And uh, when they arrive, I'll get it pulled in to the garage. Now, we have a snowstorm about to come. It's supposed to start tonight into tomorrow afternoon. So more than likely, I'll get it into the garage, but I might not start it. Well, maybe I'll do some of it today and then uh, maybe some of it tomorrow while I'm snowed in. It usually takes about two days to do. Uh, we'll just see how it all plays out. I might have a little bit extra time just because uh, it is, you know, getting shipped in here and it's going to get shipped back out. Unless he decides to you know, maybe fly out here, or up here, and drive it back home. We'll see. Regardless, he's going to be very happy with the results. Very happy with the results. He went to my website, www.goldelementautoworks.com, and he ordered the coilovers and also the power steering pump. Now, I know that everyone does not do the power steering pump conversion, meaning you pull out the tandem ABC pump and you install a standard power steering pump, uh, both of which, the coilovers and the pump, you can buy from my website. Um, I'll attach the link, but the purpose of that is to simplify the system. Oftentimes people who have ABC issues, uh, sometimes that pump itself is an issue. It's not pressurizing enough or uh, it, maybe it's cracked. I've seen that uh, upon removal, you know, you find out that the ABC pump itself was causing many of the issues, but to replace that pump is quite expensive. Uh, if you want to get rid of the ABC pump and put a new ABC pump in, it's quite expensive. And so you for the same cost, if you're going to pay Mercedes to do it, uh, you might want to consider getting rid of the whole ABC system, which is what this customer or this client is choosing to do. Tired of having issues, tired of having problems. I just spoke to somebody yesterday, and they're going to charge them $4,300 to replace a line. Likely it's the line that runs along the engine compartment, like maybe up under the engine. And there's a lot of labor involved in replacing that line. Uh, but yeah, $4,300 to replace a line. He just replaced his pump and uh, he's tired of putting money into the system. Now, I also got a little bit of information yesterday that, hold on, let me turn the camera around so you guys can see my face and see the expression. <laughs> All right. I just got some information yesterday saying that Mercedes Benz, yes, the Mercedes Benz in Florida is now offering coilover conversions. <laughs> what? So all you people out there who keep telling me that the coilover conversion is against Mercedes uh, protocol or standards and, 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 and who are we to know more than the engineers who designed them? Well, Mercedes now has come to terms and realized that switching over to coilovers is a good option for customers or clients who choose not to get their cars repaired. I mean, can you imagine uh, a dealership? Uh, who is bombarded with these SLs. Keep in mind that this is Florida, so there are a lot of SLs down there. Hard top convertibles, duh, Florida, you know what I'm saying? Who are bringing their cars in and it's and don't want to put that two, three, four thousand dollars into repairs, in some case, ten thousand dollars to repair a suspension. Yes, a suspension, a suspension, not the engine, not the transmission, the suspension. So now they can't drive their car, their car is dragging getting towed in getting towed away because they don't want to foot that bill mercedes has come to the realization that hmm since a lot of people are doing these coilovers maybe we should do these coilovers too now i'm sure mercedes benz as a company i'm sure they're not going to hmm, do the liability reasons fully I guess uh, put their all into it and their support into it in that way due to liability because they are installing an aftermarket uh, suspension system into their Mercedes. I'm sure there's something that the customer has to sign showing that Mercedes, it relieves all liability of Mercedes from the quality of the, of the, of the part and uh, any issues they might have after the installation. The fact of the matter is this, it's undeniable proof and evidence 
that a lot of people are going over to the coilovers on their Mercedes. It is a good option. It's not OEM. It's not as good as uh, the ABC when it comes to active body control and the, and the uh, technology behind the proper operation of that suspension system. The advantages, the technological and um, engineering advantages of the ABC system. We know that coilovers cannot compare to that um, equally, but we do know it is a good option. It's a great option. A great option. Why do you think so many people are doing it? And as many coilover jobs that I've done, I don't have any complaints. The only complaints that I have, and I wouldn't even consider these complaints, and that's why I say there are no complaints. There's people who have had to get it adjusted because whoever did the work didn't properly dial it in. But the system itself, no complaints. Find some complaints on the SL. Find some coilover complaints on the SL. And then you can tell me that it's not a good option. You won't find many, if any. Most of the time, whoever installed them didn't do uh, their due diligence. Maybe it was their first time. Maybe they don't install coilovers enough on Mercedes, adjustable coilovers enough on their Mercedes to know what things to look out for at the time of installation. And sometimes they have to go back and back and back and then get it just right. I had to do that when I first started, but it's been a long time since then. And I've done a lot of coilover jobs since then. And this is the coilovers on the SL, the CL, and the S-Class. So I'm more than confident and looking forward to this job coming in. So he'll be here shortly. I was told that he would be here by now. He's three minutes late. <laughs> I don't care. Uh, he'll be here. And when he's here, you'll see him pull up. Hopefully I can catch him. I think I hear him. Oh, I think I hear him. Let me turn this camera around. There it is. There it is. Hmm. Very interesting.
You can bring them in a little closer. That one good over there? Cause I can't see that one. So if we hear it fall, we gotta stop. Yeah, man. You good. You good over here? Are you good up there? All right. Perfect. Follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip. Dang! Follow the drip, follow the drip. Dang! Follow the drip. Follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip. Follow the drip. Follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip, follow the drip. Hmm, what do we have here? A leaky SL500. Guess why it's here? Because he wants a coilover swap. Hmm, what kind of coilover swap? This one. Silver's Neomax. Boom. You know what time it is. Let's go. Okay, well I am in the garage and it is cold out here. It is very cold. Uh, I think temperature tonight is gonna drop below 30 degrees. It is freezing. So I got my little heater going. Uh, I'm just gonna take a while for this garage to warm up. But I am about to start with removal of the uh, pump, the tandem ABC pump. And as of right now, it's no longer functioning. The uh, power steering itself is not working. So that means that the pump is compromised. At least half of it doesn't work. He's already having issues out of the ABC, so obviously uh, this pump is done. Uh, this tandem ABC pump is no longer uh, operating to pressurize the system for uh, the suspension, nor the power steering. It is dead. All right. This thing looks good, man. Let's focus on this car right now. This is beautiful. This is beautiful. I can't wait to get this thing lifted correctly um, and dialed in with the... Uh, Silver's Neil Max adjustable coilovers. He really has a lot of nice stuff done to this car. Look at the grill. 
Their grill looks fantastic. Nice front license plate. Headlights look clear. Look nice and clear. I like the emblem right there. Black is my favorite color. When it comes to these cars, when it comes to all Mercedes, actually. The chrome wheels, these are Mandras. These are some high-end wheels, nice. Very nice. Chrome is always pretty. He look, it looks like he's them very clean. No oxidation. They're staggered, deeper in the back, you can tell. This one has more of a lip. Mandras wheels are specifically made for Mercedes. You can see here, looking on the inside, he has some he has some custom work done here. I like this, man. Look at these seats. I'm going to assume originally these were the uh, gray seats, the light gray seats, uh, just like my SL55. And he did what I said I'm going to do, basically change the uh, the seats. Now he had them reupholstered, it looks like, because he still has the original base, but he has the uh, black leather seats. And it is a true black leather. Mercedes usually uses that uh, charcoal leather, uh, which looks kind of black. <laughs> he did the uh, armrest right here. He did the same things to that seat right there. And if you look down there, it looks like there's a custom subwoofer down there. Turn this light back on. Now this is nice, man. Now this right here takes the cake. Look at this. At some point I'll turn it on and I'll catch a video of it actual uh actually operating but this screen is nice the way it protrudes out way it sticks out like that i like that that is nice big old screen too look at that big screen that's really nice nice steering wheel that looks that looks aftermarket that doesn't look like a factory steering wheel hold on take a look at this let me get in here oh that looks nice look at that oh wait this has been upgraded. I love it. Look at that steering wheel. That thick wood. Woo, that's nice. Man, this screen is dope. Look at that. Look at the brand. All right, pay attention. Look at the brand. It's nice, man. Very nice. Subwoofer hitting right there, sir, at Vega. Yeah, he ain't playing. That's nice. So... You know, I I'm not satisfied with my silver or, or, or light gray interior on mine either. Um, so I definitely respect him making these changes because it's kind of giving me a heads up as to what I'll be looking forward to as I start modifying my interior. You know, having this nice aftermarket up-to-date radio, um, I'm sure it's touchscreen. Um, this is nice. And you still have your cup holders. So that's nice. Very nice. Very nice. Very nice. Nice shifter right there. A bigger shift knob. Wood. Looks good, man. Looks real good. I love custom work done to these Mercedes, man. I love it. I love it. Mercedes definitely, you know, knew what they were doing with their designs. Uh, but they are early designs. And uh, these cars look so modern from the outside. You want your inside to also be modern. It's just what it is, you know. It's just what it is. All right. Let me get out of here. But yeah, very nice, dude. I like the spoiler, the, 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 the wing, black to match the color of the car. Very nice, very nice. Love the wheels, love it, love it, love it. I guess the only thing additional I do to this car is add some tinted windows to it. It's so pretty, so black. I love black, man. I love a black SL. Just makes everything else pop, you know? Your wheel choice, your grills. It just makes all the little things like this just pop. Such a beautiful car. Really looking forward to this coilover conversion. But like I said, first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna pop uh, this hood and remove the tandem pump. We help this customer have a, uh, uh, where's it at? Allow this customer to have power steering again. Let's take a look at it. Okay, where are we at? You are the problem. Let's get you out of there. 
and let's install a standard power steering pump and get things back turning easily again. Yeah, let's do that. You gotta go. You got to go. All right, so first thing you wanna do is remove these three bolts that are holding on this pulley right here for the ABC pump. Remove those three bolts. It's a 10 millimeter socket or it is a E12, this one right here. All right, it is a star bit, but a 10 millimeter socket will also work as well. But use that right there, loosen those bolts. Because the next thing you do is you have to remove this belt. Once the belt is removed, there's not enough tension on here to break free those three bolts. So loosen those first and then use the tensioner pulley. Pull that back this way. <laughs> Look at my hand this way. Uh, using a 17 millimeter socket in an extension like this cheetah bar or something long like this in order to pull the 17 millimeter uh, tensioner back pulley back so that you can remove the belt you have to remove the belt and then you go in here you take this back off you finish removing those three bolts and take the pulley off all right lift it out the way next thing you do is you start to remove this stuff this is for the abc pump this is the reservoir you have to remove this bracket and you have to remove all that so that you can get access to everything else inside of here you'll tie back these rubber lines the feed lines uh, it will you will get a little spillage you have to put something up underneath it to catch it such as a oil drip pan of some sort put that up underneath uh, you'll see. Okay, so at this point now, the belt is removed. You see here? All right. The belt is off. Well, it's still on the pulley, but it's off the pulley. The tension is off the pulley. The three bolts are removed, so it's loose. Cannot completely remove it until I remove this line right here. In order to remove that line right there, again, I have to remove all this stuff, get the stuff out the way so that I have clear access so I can get my tools down there to remove everything else that's in the way. It's very tight down there. There is no easy way to do this. It's very tight. You have to use a variety of tools and uh, your knuckles might get cut up a little bit. There's hidden bolts back there. You have to know what you're looking for. When I remove this pump, I'll show you some of those hidden bolts, uh, nuts uh, that you have to get access to and why it's difficult to get back there. Again, I use a variety of tools to, to do this work different lengths, small, width, uh, small, long, wide, you know, extensions, no extensions. Some stuff I do by hand, you know, by feel. Uh, sometimes you might use a mirror and a light, you know. It's a variety of things that you have to do in order to access everything back there. Um, so, you know, take your time. Don't get overly frustrated. You can do it, you will do it. It just takes a little bit of time and precision and uh, patience, all right? You gotta have patience. Now, I remove this wheel because I'm going to remove this lining because, like I said, there's going to be a lot of fluid that pours down. And I would like to catch as much of it as possible instead of it filling up that undercarriage lining and running all over the place. So I try to catch it all. Uh, that lining has to be removed anyways because you have ABC components right here, valve blocks right there. You have another one right here, uh, an accumulator of some sort right there, valve blocks right here, lines that feed to the uh, ABC strut that have to uh, be removed that I have to get access to. Now you don't have to do all that. That's what I choose to do. I remove all the ABC components. Some people just cap off the lines. Some people don't even remove the ABC pump. I mean, they, they just use the ABC pump for the power steering purpose and uh, they cap off the lines where they disconnect the ABC struts. So you have some options there, but whenever I do a coilover conversion, I'm pulling that out of there and I'm putting a standard power steering pump in this place and I'm removing all the ABC components. I'm lightening the car up as much as possible, simplifying the system so that it can be easily maintained by any mechanic, not just a Mercedes mechanic. All right. So that's why that's off. That's why the car is in the air and why this, uh, again, is exposed, but I will be getting, getting in there and removing that, that lining. Uh, there's a couple little push pin uh, clips that hold that in there, plus some 10 millimeter, 10 millimeter uh, uh, nuts, plastic nuts, and also a few eight millimeter screws. All right.
All right, so the bolts that you remove, uh, the nuts that you remove is this nut and bolt combination right here. You have to remove the one that's kind of hidden back here. Let me see if I can put the camera right there. You can see it right there, the threads. Yeah, it's back there. You see it, right? You see it. Remove the nut off of that, and then remove the nut down here, right there. All right, remove that. That allows all the stuff to now move. All right. I don't think that's seen. I think that's. Uh, I think that's it. That's the only thing that's holding it down. Now you have to start disassembling the line that feeds the power steering reservoir. Or, or I'm sorry, that goes from the uh, from the uh, ABC reservoir down to the uh, tandem pump right there. Remove that line. It's going to cause a mess. So I have some zip ties prepared to uh, tie that back so you don't spill too much uh, because you have to continue to remove other things. So disassemble all this stuff right here. Get it out the way. All right. Okay. So now you have to remove this bolt right here so that you can move this out the way. Uh, you're not necessarily going to disconnect it right now. You just need to move out the way. Well, I guess you can disconnect it because this does have to come off. And this is the feed from the for the power steering reservoir into the pump. Now again, tie that off. Um, let me see. So I got this stuff out the way, that bracket in the ABC reservoir. This is what remains. You can disconnect this. You can either disconnect it here or where it connects, where that line feeds into the valve block. Either way, disconnect that or just get this out the way. You're gonna remove this at some point. So get that out the way and disconnect this. Can you see what I'm talking about? Just connect this line right here and uh, get that out the way. You're gonna reuse this. You do not need to get rid of this. You're gonna reuse that. Save as much of that fluid as you can because as long as your power steering fluid is good, you're gonna reuse it, okay? If you have to add to it, because you probably will lose some, use the same type of power steering fluid that was already in there. So if it's the uh, Pitocin fluid, use that. If it's some type of organic, not organic, synthetic power steering fluid that Mercedes uses, use that. Um, you can use any type of supplemental uh, Mercedes approved fluid as well. Uh, try not to mix, but if you have to, you know, you're fine as long as it's synthetic and Mercedes approved. All right, so get this out the way, then you get access to the uh, bolts that you have to remove from the uh, ABC pump. All right, so there you go. I tie that back. I have it at this weird angle because this likes to drip out, of course because of gravity. If you tilt this too much, it starts to pour out the cap. Even though it's supposed to be sealed, it really isn't. Eventually, it starts seeping out. And that's how air really escapes. It's a sealed system, but air can escape. That means fluid can escape. So don't tilt this too much. It will drip out. Of course, tie this back and just move it out the way. There's enough length here from this hose to get it out the way, all right? So now I have this exposed. Easier access. Now I can come in from this angle right here with the uh, ratchets and the wrenches, sockets and all that kind of good stuff. Uh, go ahead and unplug this connection here. You don't need that. You can tie that off, whatever. Get that out the way. Uh, now I have access to this bolt. This holds this bracket. Now again, I'm converting this over to a standard power steering pump. So for those who are just watching this video to replace the, the tandem pump, you're not gonna cut lines, you're not going to, uh, you're disassembling with the intent of reassembling. So you're not gonna destroy anything. You're going to carefully disconnect, unscrew, unbolt. Don't ruin anything, take your time. In my case, I know that there's some things that I can cut, remove, whatever, because I'm not reusing it. But you're not gonna do that, okay? You're going to reuse what you're dis disassembling. So alter my instructions accordingly. All right, so now I have access to this. In my case, I'm reusing this line. This is the power steering. This is the high pressure power steering, the, the rack and pinion uh, power steering line, high pressure line. This bolt has to come off, and then there is a bolt here, or a nut that has to be loosened up right there. That line has to come out. I mean, anything that's holding this thing up together has to be removed. All lines, all feeds have to be removed. It gets crazy, it gets crazy. There's a lot back there. A lot back there. All right, so you see that this line, the high pressure power steering line is removed. Again, that goes to the rack and pinion, and I'm reusing that. Now, again, I'm converting over to coilovers. 
standard power steering pump, you do need that line. So save it. This line right here, I mean, this uh, bracket right here, this bracket will have to be slightly bent when I reattach it or it's going to rub on the um, serpentine belt. You'll see. Once I reattach it, you have to just bend that back. And it's flexible. <laughs> Not flexible, but it bends very easily. The line itself is, uh, you know, once you reattach it to the pump, then that right there will pry back very easily to make room for that serpentine belt so it doesn't rub. Now, at this point, there are two bolts that hold the ABC pump uh, to the front. One is right there. You can see it down there. And there's another one. So that bolt requires either a 10 millimeter socket or let's see where you at. This one right here, which is a E12. All right, so the E12 is what's needed. Or is it the E12? You know what? No, it's not. Yes, it is. No, it's not. Yes, it is. Hold on. Wait a minute. Let me see. Where are we at? Is it this? The E14? It might be the E14. The E12 is the smaller one. I think the E14 is the, uh, yeah, that's the larger one. Yeah, that's it. <laughs> Anyways, so use that to remove those two in the front. Now, in order, you can get access to the top one. The top one you can't see right now. The top one is, uh, it's up under, in between, right up under here. All right, you can see part of the bracket right there. Uh, it's right up under there. Can you see it? Uh, there it is, boom, all right? That one you have access to. But the lower one down there, in order to access that, you have to pull the tensioner back. The tensioner is in the way. So reattach that 17 millimeter long wrench or cheater bar to that right there. Can you see it? There you go. This right here, that's the tensioner pulley that thing back and you have to hold it with your in my case with my left hand while with my right hand I work on that um, that bolt all right so got to put my device down and get to work those are the two bolts that holds the ABC pump in the front so blurry There we go. All right, back to work. I love all my brothers that brought me here. I mean, I mean, give us our mercy on us. I was blessed to be able to have more time to enjoy the fundamental things, like taking my son to schools, going to their basketball games, being their coach. If I was really going super gun ho and trying to keep up with the Joneses on the music industry side, I would have lost a lot of great moments in my kid's life. Okay, so I got those two bolts out. They look like this. Again, this is what, what I say, E14, same as 10 millimeter. Let me double check again. Where'd you go, where'd you go, where'd you go? There you go. Yeah, E14, or you can use 10 millimeter. I had to switch to a 10 millimeter because sometimes these just don't fit in there as snug as, as they do in a 10 millimeter. Sometimes 10 millimeter will grab it sometimes better than that. And in this case, because this is kind of recessed, if you look at it, it's kind of tapered. So sometimes it doesn't grab it enough. So a 10 millimeter bolt, I mean a 10 millimeter socket does, does just well. So you can go back and forth. Uh, earlier I was talking about, you're gonna need this one right here, which is the E12. And that is the same as a eight millimeter. So if you don't have a E12, you can use a eight millimeter, eight millimeter socket, okay? So again, pretty much you're gonna use a eight millimeter socket or E12. You're gonna use a 10 millimeter socket or a E14. And you're also gonna use 17 millimeter. Whew, yeah, 17 millimeter. Now that's for the, uh, what is that for? For the tensioner pulley and also for the high pressure power steering line, that is a 17 millimeter. Now, let me see. This right here, let me see if I can zoom in. All right, this right here, that bolt right there, I believe that nut, uh, the banjo bolt or whatever you call that thing, banjo nut, nut, bolt, 
banjo, whatever. I think that's like a 19. I had to verify, but it's not. I don't think that's a 17. I think it's a 19. Maybe even an 18. I don't know. Let me see. You know what? Let me find out right now. Let me look for. Uh, let me see. 18. I think it's an 18. I have it. I didn't write it down. I can't remember. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's a, yeah, I believe it to be a 19. Yeah, it didn't work. Let's see, do I have a 19? There we go. Let's try this again. Well, the 19 fits, but it's kind of loose. Let me make sure that that 18 wasn't it. It fits. Let me do this 18. Let me just make sure. Yeah. All right. All right. So it's a 19. Okay. So that back ball right there, it's a 19. 19 millimeter, baby. 19. All right. All right. So I am going to uh, remove that. And then I'm going to remove what secures this right here. Boom. So that's your high pressure. It's not, let me feel back there. Yeah, that's your high pressure ABC line. So that has to get disconnected. That has to get disconnected. You have to remove this thing right here. I forgot what it's called. This thing right here, you have to remove in order to get access to the rest of the bolts. All right, there's a bracket back there, black bracket that secures this to the engine block, this pump to the engine block. You gotta remove the uh, bolt that holds that in and you gotta remove the bolt that holds it to the engine block to get access to the last bolt that holds it, you know, from the backside. So there's like a nut and a bolt. And I think one more nut or something. So as you start move, moving that stuff out of the way, you can access the rest of the stuff. Your hand will, you know, it's a struggle back there. You will use a combination of the tools to get those last ones out. All right, back to it. Okay, so that bolt in the rear or that, let me show you, it's out. Where's that? There it goes. All right, so that's out. That was a 19 millimeter banjo bolt or whatever it's called. That's out. I forgot there's another one right there. There you go. That's the other one that's holding it in, all right? So that one held the line in, the one in the back, and this one is what connects it to the pump, all right? And then that little E12 little bolt had to come out right there that holds it also in place, all right? The reason why all this stuff right here has to be removed is because you need this angle to get access to that bolt. You need all this space to come down at the proper angle to be able to access that bolt. Just lay that right there. You see what I'm saying? That stuff right here has to be removed in order to come in at that weird angle to catch that bolt, which is also at a weird angle. All right. There you go. That bolt right there. Come in behind here and boom, you know what I'm saying? Just like that. You can do it little by little that way. You can use this right here, a ratchet type, you know? But you need this right here in order to do that. All right, 19 millimeters. Okay, so here goes the last bolt that's behind there. Well, you can't really see it, but it's behind there is a 13 millimeter uh, nut, actually, not a bolt, but a nut. All right, this right here is what's holding the, that pump on. Once you remove that bracket, a bracket right here, once you remove that bracket, there was an E12, which is uh, the same as, like I said, an eight millimeter socket that you had to remove to get that one from the um, motor block or the engine block. Uh, but this right here is the last one that you have to remove. This is a 13 millimeter, and it's right behind there. You can shine some light on it. Let me show you. Let's see. Shine some light on it. You can see it. Yeah, it's hard to see. Do it now. There it is, right there. You see it? 13 millimeter bolt. I use this to remove it. All right, so you can do it. You can do it. It's hard, but you can do it. All right. Okay, all right. I have the new uh, power steering pump installed. So how did I do it? Let me grab some light here real quick so I can 
point out a couple things. Uh, let's see, that right there, can you see it? All right, that's a bolt right there that you gotta put back in to secure it from the back. Secure it from the front by those two bolts. The one right there, and then the lower one that you have to pull the tensioner pulley back in order to access. Again, two hand job, hold it back while you insert the screw and get it in there with one hand. So uh, that's how you secure that. This right here, you have to reattach. This is that high pressure line for the rack and pinion for the power steering. This is that little bracket I was talking about that is no longer needed, but you just bend it back to create clearance for this belt, okay? So I just grab some pliers and pry this back. This bends easily out the way. You have to do that. Um, I get it started. I start threading it before I uh, secure the power steering pump because there's more room, more wiggle room. Uh, get that thing started. Don't cross thread it. Don't destroy it. Uh, get it started. Get a couple threads in there. Maybe five, five thread, three or four, whatever. Get a couple threads in there. Get it started. Go ahead and get this uh, power steering pump in place. Get a couple screws in there. Uh, get the one up top is easy to do. The one in the back right, right there is easy to do. Get that one uh, started. Get it in place. Um, lock it down. The one in the, the bottom, get that one started. Once you start that, you got to finish it though because you cannot release the tensioner pulley or it will catch that lower uh, bolt. It will hit it and it can damage your threading. So once you start putting that bolt in, you have to finish it. Then finish your top and the back, tighten this thing in, in all the way. I typically spin it. I usually attach <clears throat> this to it. It has some of my oil already in it. You wanna make sure you get that oil in there. You, you cycle it a little bit, turn it, the pulley itself, <coughs> excuse me, uh, make sure that fluid is uh make sure it's well lubricated i guess is what i'm trying to say um attach the reservoir and uh i preserved or, or saved uh 95 percent of the fluid that's in here so that once i crank this thing up it doesn't run dry and uh you're good to go so uh, again this came to me without power steering because the abc pump was completely shot Neither the ABC side or the power steering side was working. So now we have a working power, uh, power steering pump. And so once I reattach this, I'll start the car up. I'll make sure it's not whining. All right. I'll make sure it's, it's spinning no problem. Um, after I attach this, I might loosen up that belt. Uh, I got a little distracted. Uh, I should have attached this first and then the belt. Uh, it would make it easier for me to spin it by hand just to make sure that the fluid is going in there and it's not starting off dry. Like I said, it comes with fluid in there. Uh, it came with a cap right here to contain the fluid so it's not a dry start, but it also helps to spin it freely once you attach this. So I reattach that, I loosen up that belt, that's why I still have this in place, remove that tension, spin it by hand, and then I go ahead and uh, crank it, you know, get, go ahead and get the car started and make sure that power steering is good. So as of right now, that high pressure ABC line is detached. Uh, it drips a little bit, that's fine. I have a drip pan up underneath catching it. Uh, after I'm done with this, then I will start to disassemble all this good stuff right here. All right, so once I do that, I'll start to uh, remove the ABC components and then of course install, uh, well remove the uh, struts and install the coilovers. So I always start my process off by removing the power steering or the ABC pump and installing the standard power steering. Now let's look at this ABC pump real quick before I move on. All right, this thing is heavy. It's probably three times, four times as heavy as the uh, newly installed basic standard power steering uh, pump. So this big oversized thing does incredible things. It pressurizes two systems. That's why it's so heavy duty. It's an incredible system when working properly. All right. Uh, the last bolts that I had to remove off the back, man, this is what the back looks like. All right. So this right here is, is the last uh, nut that I had to take off, that 13 millimeter nut. You can see it looking down this way. 
This one right here has the bracket attached to it. The bracket is hard to remove this thing right here. It attaches um, like this. Okay. It attaches like that and like this. So there's a bolt that runs, of course, through that, that attaches to that. You have to remove that nut, of course, after you remove this. There's a bolt that runs, like I said, the engine block connects it right there. Um, and that's the stuff in the back. Of course, this one right here. Now, I wound up leaving that one. Remember I was saying that angle that you have to uh, access to, to remove this. I wound up keeping this on there. I was able to still remove it without taking this off. I did that just because my angle was kind of funny. Um, the threads, is, <laughs> it doesn't seem like it would, but how this is turned can have an effect on how easy it is to remove it. Just getting it started, getting that thread started, getting a good grip and not stripping this. So I decided to just leave this in place and I can remove it without removing this. So that was easier for me. Other times I have removed this first. It just gives you more clearance and more room to pull this thing out. But you can access everything with this in place. It is easier. This is out to access this back uh, nut right there that was in place. But I wound up using a 13 millimeter, not this one, but it, like a 13 millimeter uh, wrench. I was able to get it in there in like small turns, you know what I'm saying, in order to get that out of there. So that worked. So this pump right here is done. Um, it's, you can't really, uh, I don't know, for whatever reason, it, it no longer works. I don't know why, um, but it's done. All right, so it's a part. You can use it for parts, you know, scrap parts, whatever. I don't know. Maybe somebody can rebuild that thing, but that's outside of my uh, scope of practice. Uh, so now I'm about to, like I said, finish this part right here. Get this thing, uh, the power steering reservoir reinstalled. The hose use the same clamp. It does secure it onto this one. Let me show you. It will secure onto that one. You have to push the hose back all the way, put the clamp on as far back, and it will hold. You don't have to worry about it. These grooves catch it. It will not come off. Just make sure it's pushed back all the way. Use that same clamp right here. That same pressure fitting or whatever you call this thing. All right. Use that one to secure it on there. And uh, you'll use one bolt right here for the bracket. I mean, uh, yeah, the bracket that holds the power steering pump reservoir or whatever you'll use that one bolt and screw combination uh bolt and nut combination rather and uh you're good to go you know he'll have power steering again all right so that's how you do it that's how you remove it that's how you install a standard power steering pump all right i'm about to go ahead and go so i can finish this part of it up it's getting kind of late i've taken a lot of time recording this process it's time to finish up okay all right so it is in place now the reservoir is attached. You see right there, that bolt right there, nut and bolt, that's in place. Fluid level is good, not much came out. I reattached it right there using the same uh, fitting or pressure, tension, whatever thing is called, spring-loaded tensioner, fitting, clip, whatever. Clamp, yeah, clamp, that's what it's called, yeah, pressure clamp. Okay, same thing. Um, I loosened the belt, removed it off of this top one right here so that I can spin that freely in order to make sure there's fluid in the system so it's not a dry start. And uh, uh, of course I'll remove this right here, this filter. This is for the ABC reservoir. Um, I, at this point, am about to start it. Oh yeah, also, so that you don't get that red ABC light, you gotta remove this fuse. Which one? It's the 15 right there. This, there it goes. You see it? The one right below the 7.5. That 15 right there is the ABC fuse. Remove that fuse and the red ABC light will come off, will turn off, and you'll only get that white ABC warning light when you first start the car that you can clear with a button on the steering wheel on the SL. Remove that fuse and uh, no more red ABC light. When you do a, co a coilover conversion, you have to do that or you have to code it out uh, if it's the, I think the 07 and up, it's a different um, module, different SAM, different system. The modules are different. Uh, you can't just pull the fuse out. You have to actually clear it out. 
uh, with the Mercedes diagnose, diagnostic specific tool or whatever, Star or X Century or something like that. Uh, but on these earlier models, you can just remove that fuse and it turns off that red ABC light. Uh, it will no longer look for that system because when that red ABC light is on, you can't see anything else on your instrument cluster. Now, for some reason, this 7.5 uh, slot right up underneath the ABC fuse, it's supposed to be another 7.5 fuse there. I've never seen it not there. Um, for some reason, it was removed. I can see the... Uh, copper prongs in there so there was a fuse there at some point sometimes there's a blank spot there's no uh terminal or, or connections for the fuse but in this case in both holes there are copper terminals or uh, slots uh, for uh, the fuse so for whatever reason that one was removed i don't know why okay this side is copper that side's not whatever i don't know um for whatever reason that fuse is gone i know that there's a lot of modification to this car when it comes to the audio system um, he has an aftermarket radio. Um, I'll have to look at the uh, fuse chart to see what that fuse is. But as you can see, he has some nice, nice upgrades in here. He even has a subwoofer in there in that back. Yeah, can't really see it. Uh, but behind the seat, there's a nice subwoofer. I mean, this is really a nice car. So anyways, remove that fuse. Uh, and uh, you should be ready to go. I'll go ahead and start this thing up and make sure that uh, everything is, uh, uh, power steering is working properly, all right? If you're doing this inside of a garage, don't forget to open the garage door when you start the car. <laughs> Uh-oh, I ran into a little issue. Now, because this car has been operating without the power steering functioning, um, without this ABC pump properly pressurizing the rack and pinion, the power steering functionality of the vehicle has been running dry. I am going to assume that there was a lot of air in the system. So even though I turned the wheel or the pulley for the pump after I attached the reservoir, making sure that fluid ran through it and it was not a dry start, when I started it, it was making some noises sounding like it was running dry. I think what has happened is because the system was running dry for so long or for a period of time, long enough for there not to be fluid where there needs to be fluid. Those, that air that's in the system, I think it affected the pump because it was making these weird noises and now it's whining. Let me, let me show you. I'm gonna start the car up and just listen. Just listen. take that back <laughs> it went away so when I first started this thing up it's saying all right that was obviously the power steering pump um, there was a lot of noise coming from it it was trying to pressurize that system there was a lot of lines I mean a, a, a lot of air in the lines I had to add more fluid the power steering fluid that was in that reservoir dropped very fast very rapidly i had to add i probably added a bottle and a half of fluid into that now this is what i use i use the preston full synthetic european power steering fluid bmw porsche jaguar mercedes saab uh, the mini the vw audi Volvo and whatever, Purego, uh, approved. That is a good fluid that you can use if, if you're using Mercedes power steering fluid. The other option would be, let me see, do I have it? It's the Pitocin, this right here. That's another option. You can use that either. I mean, you can use that too. Either one. 
All right, so it just depends on, again, just match what's already in there. So it started off dry. There was air trapped in the system. There was a lot of noise coming from that power steering pump. I started the car three times and now it's quiet. The level, let's see. I can add a little bit more to it. So evidently there was a lot of air in that system. I also know there was a lot of air in the system because inside the power steering reservoir, it was a lot of bubbles. It was very foamy, which means that there was a lot of air that had to escape out the system. At this point, I've added almost two. That's 24 fluid ounces. So there was a lot of air in this system. It could have ruined my pump that I just installed. Dang. How low is this, man? We're almost there. Just a little bit at a time, no need to rush. You have a line when it's cold or a line when it's hot. All right, it's at the very tip. So that's good. I'm gonna go ahead and turn that steering wheel a couple times, make sure it's not noisy. I'm, I'm very happy because I did not want to replace that pump. Um, I mean, I could if I needed to, but that's two pumps for the same job. That would have pissed me off. So I turned it to a dead spot. There we go. It's under the most pressure when you turn it all the way so you can't turn anymore. That's when you're pressurizing the system the most. It's quiet now. That's good news. I wish I would have recorded it when I first started it. It would have scared you because it scared me. I wanted to make sure I wasn't destroying the car, destroying uh, that it wasn't, you know, something else going wrong. I, I figured it was the pump, but it was just a noise I never heard before. And again, I've never worked on an SL where the power steering was compromised because of the pump. It's always the ABC side, but in this case, that pump was completely dead completely dead so my fluid levels are good now i can close that we're good to go baby i'll clean that up i'll remove all this stuff man all right so for now this part is done all right there you go guys now you know how to remove this and you also know how to install it Any questions, reach out to me. I got plenty of information. I've done this a lot of times. I know a lot about this system. I had a lot of experience. I can answer most, if not all, questions. Um, again, this is how I do it. I'm not telling you to do a conversion, but if you're going to do a conversion, this is how you do it. I highly recommend converting over to a simple power steering system, a power steering pump, and removing the ABC pump, because this is a very complex, highly over-engineered system if you're only utilizing half of it. If you're not gonna use the ABC side, you have a lot installed that you're not using. A lot of weight that you don't need. A very complex system for a simple task, power steering, all right? I highly recommend that you remove the ABC pump and install a power steering pump. I will include the standard power steering pump in my link. Uh, I will include the link in my video and you can click on it if you want to buy it through my uh, website. That's Gold Element Auto Works. All right, www.goldelementautoworks.com. You can go there and buy it. All right. <sighs> Any questions, give me a call, man.
Like, share, subscribe, comment. Tell me what you think. I'll let me. More to come. You already know. All right, so I had the two front wheels off. I just removed the uh, coilover. I'm sorry, the uh, ABC struts. I just pulled those out. They came out pretty easy. You just disconnect the top. The three bolts that, or the three nuts that uh, hold the top up. Um, I'll leave them threaded on there just a little bit. The uh, lower one is a 19 uh, millimeter. Let me see. This right here. It's a 19 millimeter bolt connected to the bottom of each strut, of, of each ABC strut. I use a fork. I wedge one corner of the fork in between the lower control arm and the uh, strut, and I bang the heck out of it. It takes some very concentrated thrust by that hammer. Make sure you get a heavy hammer, and it will pop out. Um, go ahead and um, unattach the ABC connection, the bracket. There it goes. This bracket right here, disconnect that so that it moves freely, enough for you to pull this thing back. This is spring loaded. It's very hard to do. So I started off by twisting it first with some pliers. And with these right here, started off with that, twisted, kind of loosened a little bit. You can spray it if you want to, but not always necessary. These things uh, likely have never been removed since 2005 in this case. And uh, work it, work it, work it. Once you drop it from the top, remove the, the rest of the uh, three nuts, pull it down, it pulls away. Now you got a little bit more playroom and just keep manipulating that until it breaks free. All right, get that thing out the way. Get your coilovers together. Adjust those to the proper length. You're gonna to have to readjust them. Likely you won't get it perfect the first time. There is a sweet spot, uh, but there is a uh, area to adjust them like a length that's kind of appropriate, but it won't be absolutely perfect because everybody wants theirs adjusted differently. In this case, he has 20 inch rims. So with the space that he wants, he kind of wants it like the OEM uh, original look at the lowest setting of the ABC. So I have an approximate length and then I'll surely go in and uh, do some uh, readjusting and that's just what it is. Again, ABC is great when it works, very bad when it doesn't, very expensive when it doesn't, unless you're doing the work yourself, but it's still frustrating nonetheless. It doesn't matter if you're doing it or somebody else is doing it. It will fail again. It will be inconvenient when it does fail. And not everyone wants to keep dealing with that. They want their suspension to work like a normal car, be able to drive it, you know, let it be reliable like a normal car is reliable. A normal car suspension is reliable. All components eventually fail and need replacement, but it doesn't strand you on the side of the road requiring a tow truck, but it does fail like an ABC suspension does. Even aromatic is not as, is, as, as much of an issue as ABC. When ABC fails, oh, it fails. When aromatic fails, yeah, all right, you can start the car, but it usually raises it back up, but it will, over time, continue to lower and lower and lower, and one day it might not raise up, but you have plenty of time to, to resolve that issue. Not with ABC. ABC, when it fails, it just goes. You'll start having little symptoms, but when a line ruptures, it's done. You're done. It will lock out. It'll either lock, lock out in a high position or a low position, but it will lock out. All right, so that's why this one has coilovers. This was ABC. That's why this one is receiving coilovers. Uh, this is aromatic. That's strut coilover, whatever, not coilovers, but you know what I'm talking about, regular strut suspension. This is aromatic. This is still uh, ABC. I haven't changed this one yet. And that one right there is aromatic. I've dealt with countless amount of Mercedes that have both been aromatic, both ABC or aromatic. And I know what I'm talking about regarding the reliability of the ABC suspension. I know that when it fails, I've repaired them several times. I don't automatically just go to uh, coilovers. But now, for my personal vehicles, I know what's best. And I know what to recommend to others who want a different option, who want something more reliable. I don't care what you guys say, coilovers are more reliable than ABC, period. All right. <laughs> Back to my installation. So here goes the completed coilover job on the SL500. Looks good, doesn't it? Now, it's obviously at night, it's dark. I'm gonna take some uh, some more video and pics of it during the day. But uh, 
I got it dialed in just right. Height wise, everything is just right. Cincinnati, Ohio is cold. Temperature is about 30, maybe about 38 degrees right now. It's wet out here, it's been raining today, but still, work has to be done. Had to complete the job, it looks good. I like it a lot, man, this is nice. So it's gonna be shipped back to Georgia. It's a great looking car, man, great looking car. Handles very well, this is an SL500 2005. When I received the car, power steering did not work. ABC suspension did not work. The common issue was the tandem pump and also a ruptured line. That pump uh, was done. Neither did it operate the suspension or the power steering. So this customer is gonna be very happy to now have power steering, <laughs> first of all. And second of all, not to ever have to worry again about that ABC suspension failing in fluid being all over his driveway or having to get the car towed back home. This car looks good, man. Looks real good. I love the way it sits. Looks real nice. These wheels are awesome. The color can't beat it. Black, silver to me are some of the best colors. Now they do have some other colors that I do love as well. Just me personally, I love black the most. Silver is the runner up. But again, there's some awesome colors out there. Some very unique ones. Oh, yeah, I can't. I, I love red. I can't forget about red. Red is another one of my favorite colors. I just like basic colors. I like red, black, silver. My number one color is black. If I could have found a black SL55, I would have bought it. But I bought a silver. My second favorite. What do I have my settings at? You might wonder. My dampening settings in the front right now are at 24 and the back is 20. I got it very tight. The back, you know, people have issues when the back is too soft, you get a little bit of that bounce when you hit a big dip. So right now, because he has 20s also, I have it at a kind of a stiff ride. Uh, just, just for handling purposes, he doesn't have as much tire. Uh, these are 20 inch manager's wheels. And so because of that, I gave it a more stiff ride. Height all the way around is about two fingers. About two fingers all the way around. That's the perfect height. Perfect height. This is a great car, man. I love the SL. It does not have to be a 5.5. It does not have to be a 600. All the SLs are nice cars. Great cars, man. Love these cars. Like I said, he's done some nice upgrades to it. He has a nice big screen in here. Big, big touch, big touch, touch screen. Let me see. There you go. Looks something like Apple or something. It's nice, man. Very nice. Very nice. I'm sure this connects with his phone, whatever device he uses, Android or Apple base. I'm sure it connects to it. You got the Bluetooth functionality, and I'm sure there's more to it. What brand is this? Let's see. All right, I'm gonna look that up later on. See what this is all about. Very nice. He upgraded his uh, steering wheel. This is not factory. This is nice, man. This is not OEM uh, SL. I don't know what this came out of, but it looks good, man. Thicker wood. This is sharp. This is very sharp. Very sharp. He has a nice subwoofer back here. I don't know if you can see it. It's a Cern, Cern Vega right there. That's nice too. He changed his seats out. Put some new uh, leather on his joint, on these joints. Looks really good, man. This is a nice car. Nice car. So this owner should be very proud. So at startup, this is the only thing that you get now. No longer do you get the red ABC light, you get this. You clear that with this button right here. All right, there you go. That's it, baby. Good to go. All right, let's drive. Safety first. Put the seatbelt on. Let's work it out, baby. Woo! 
Oh, this car feels good, man. I love it. Bye bye, ABC. Good feel. It's solid. Well planted. It just feels solid, man. I'm telling you, Corolla versus ABC. ABC, it hides a lot. It hides the road. You don't really know what your car is doing. And that's cool for a nice, comfortable ride. For a nice, comfy, soft, plush ride. But once you switch over to coilovers, you know what your car is doing. You feel it. You really do. It's just crazy. It's so hard to explain. It's not a bad ride at all, guys. When you do these coilover job, I mean, when you get a coilover done, a coilover conversion to your SL500, the car, you just feel more in one with your car, man. I don't know. I can compare it to maybe like people who drive like Porsches, 911s. You feel more, you know, in tune to what your car is doing, the handling, the characteristics of it, uh, your limitations when you're driving it. You feel more like um, like you're on the like you're on the track, not like you're on the track. I mean, it just feels like I don't know, man. <laughs> it's, it's weird, man. It's just, it's just hard to explain. It really is. It's really really hard to explain. When you turn in, when you're changing lanes, you know, when you're going around the, the corner, like right now, I might hit this corner real quick. Whoop, look at that light, whoop. Yeah, baby, you just feel it, man. Like I take corners in my SL55 with the ABC and I still feel like, let me slow down before I break traction, you know? But you don't, the car, you know, it doesn't lean with the, with the ABC, but guess what? These cars don't lean much with coilovers. I'm gonna say much because it, it's not noticeable. The lean, I know for a fact, the ABC eliminates it all together, but with coilovers, this thing is so heavy and low and tight. I mean, it, this is no sway bars, no sway bars. And I'll take a corner and it feels stable. Never have I felt like I was losing control with coilovers, never, man. Y'all gotta believe me when I'm telling y'all this, man. I'm busting the U-turn in the middle of the street. I'm heading back. I mean, you just feel like you in a freaking race car, man, with no coilovers. I mean, with uh, no ABC. With coilovers, you just feel like you're, you feel like you're finally driving this car, man. You almost feel like you have, oh, you have actually take, taken the leash off the car. Uh, you now can drive and feel this car. This owner is gonna love. I mean, love the coilover conversion. I love it, and it's not even my car. Now on my personal car, I still have ABC because I sold the one that has the coilover conversion. And honestly, I sold it too cheap and I'm not even gonna lie, I'm kinda of pissed about that one. <laughs> I, I gave that car away, but it was because I was trying to make some other moves and I had an offer on the table right now, you know, and I took it, I took it. I ain't gonna lie, I do regret it, but I did come up, I spent, you know, I saved the money that I should have got. Well, I saved on my SL55, I got my G-Wagon real cheap. So I made some other moves, you know. I sold uh, all those other cars and I bought uh, several new cars. Got my wife a S550 newer body style. So uh, I saved a lot of dough on those purchases. Ooh. You ain't for me. But uh, yeah, I mean, I saved a lot of money on those purchases, but I gave up a lot of money on selling some of those cars you know, less than what I should have, but it was money right now. Sometimes money right now is better than slow money later. I needed that money, I needed that cash. What's going on, baby? Probably an accident on the highway somewhere. Oh, it is, look at that. Crossing the highway right now, it's an accident down there. Sure is. Gotta be careful out here, it's wet. Gotta be careful out here. Yeah, baby, I love this car, man. Dang, go! Coilovers is the, is, the, is the future, baby. This is the way to go. Man, there was another one. Guess he was coming uh, west. He has to go east. Yeah. 
Let me get this thing home, man. <laughs> uh, yeah, man, wet roads, you know, it is what it is. But yeah, this car is, 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 is done, it's complete. He's gonna be very happy. Uh, coilovers is the way to go on these SLs if you're tired of the ABC. Do not knock coilovers until you have driven one that was done by Go Element Auto Works. Yeah, that's right, I'm saying it. I know these cars so well. I'm so familiar with these suspensions. I can either maintain ABC or I can get rid of it. And for me, and for many owners out here, getting rid of the ABC and converting over to coilovers is the way to go. It's how they have fallen back in love with their vehicle. They're tired of spending the money, wasting the money just for it to fail again later on. Until you have done this, you have no idea how, how good this car feels with uh, coilovers. So again, my settings in the front, you have up to 28 dampening settings from soft to firm. Uh, on this one right here, I have 24. 24 firm, 20 in the back. All right, 20 in the back. Uh, I also converted the, uh, of course, I already mentioned, but I, I pulled out the ABC tandem pump and I put in a um, standard power steering pump. He did not have power steering at all when I got this car. We now have power steering. <laughs> How do you drive a car without power steering, man? Goodness, you're gonna have some strong shoulders and triceps, I'll tell you that, some biceps. Not anymore, good power steering. Go to my website if you wanna buy that pump. It is a Mercedes, um, it's not an OEM, it is an aftermarket. Mercedes power steering pump with the necessary bracket already attached to it that you have to have in order to install that onto one of these SL500s. You've got to have that bracket. Look at that. If you're installing it onto a, a CL500, the CL W215, you need that bracket. That bracket is a necessity when converting from ABC over to standard power steering uh, when doing a coilover. Gotta have that pump. All right, so we are good, guys. This car is nice. I'm very happy. I'm very, I'm excited. I'm excited to get it dialed in like this and it feels this good. Very happy for the customer. Very happy. You know what, let me just take it up there real quick. Man, this is a nice feel. You don't want that dampening in the rear to be too hard. It, it can isolate. Um, I think the spring take away this uh, from the uh, purpose of, of the actual coil over the spring itself. Uh, too hard, it won't allow it to do what it's supposed to do. Too soft, it will bounce too much. So you want it just right. You want that rear a little softer than the uh, front. The front needs to be uh, more firm uh, for steering characteristics. The back is what you're gonna feel if it's too hard uh, it will be a very uncomfortable ride. If it's too soft, it'll be a bouncy ride. Yeah. So right now I have it pretty firm. Pretty firm in the back. Gives it a nice, well-planted, predictable ride. I am in love all over again. Very, 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 very nice. Very nice. Yep. All right, I'm back home. <laughs> there goes the G-Wagon pulled out and there goes the GL550 pulled out. Let me move these cars around. There, there goes the lab where I get where I get all the work done, man. This is where Gold Elm and Auto Works uh, puts it all together. Yep. All right. Let's see.
But thanks for watching my videos. I'll take some good shots in the daytime. It's nighttime, about 9, 11 p.m. down here in Cincinnati, Ohio, or up here in Cincinnati, Ohio, depending on uh, where you are when you're watching this video. Again, that's the lab, that's the garage. We'll call that the refinery. <laughs> Gold Element Auto Works. I'll be back. Okay, so I'm back at it again. It's the next day, it's in the morning time. And I just adjusted the rear coilovers to 18. Uh, yesterday they were set at 20, the front was set at 24. Now the back is at 18. I did that to soften the ride just a little bit for comfort. Um, at 20, it is very firm, uh, but it feels like a race car. Uh, at 18, it softens the rear a little bit, still stiff enough, but not too stiff. testing it out now. Of course, the car handles well, feels good, feels solid. Again, well planted. It does not feel unstable at all. It feels really good. Now, this is on straightaways. I'm going to get down here and uh, the road gets windy, so I'll put it to the test in that way. I'll probably be pushing it around 50, 60 miles per hour. Tell you what, doing this coilover job by yourself, it does cause some uh, some muscle aches. I've been doing this for a long time, though. I do everything myself, and I have a system. But uh, I remember the first time I installed these coilovers, man. It took three times as long, and it hurt three times as much. <laughs> doing things a difficult way. The more things, more times you do things, uh, you, you come up with different ways to get you know to the end goal more effectively, I guess. You find little shortcuts to make things work, and you learn the hard way, but you, you do learn. So let's see how this feels. Very few cars feel like an SL Mercedes, I tell you that much. cars are a lot more than just their suspension. A lot of people say that when you pull the uh, suspension, the ABC out of these cars, you destroy the car. I guess those are people who don't really appreciate their car. They can't really say what it's like to drive one without because they haven't done it. They don't know what this car is without ABC suspension unless they've owned one long enough to uh, really see the difference and understand that this car has so much more to offer. So much more to offer uh, beyond the suspension. They say without sway bars, it's unsafe. Without sway bars, it's dangerous on the road. Again, they've never driven one without sway bars. They have no idea how much this car grips the road and handles without sway bars. I understand why sway bars are important. I understand why Mercedes introduced sway bars when they did. Cars have come a long way since they introduced sway bars, since sway bars be has become a a standard you know equipment for vehicles I understand why they exist they are a necessity if one of these wheels lift off the ground in the front or in the rear loses traction to that extent sway bars is what keeps it on the road it will decrease the likelihood of that ever happening but do you understand what kind of road conditions have to exist in order for one corner of your car to lift off the ground Again, it is a safety feature. Worst case scenario. I mean, they put these cars and all cars under hard tests. They crash and destroy a bunch of cars. 
in their uh, research and development process and quality control processes and all that, safety processes. You're not driving these cars under the same harsh conditions that they are testing them with when it comes to uh, uh, safety equipment and whatnot. Um, your, your everyday driving, you're not gonna take this thing off road. You're not gonna be taking it onto a unrealistic road course where you'll be lifting up the corners and half of the car will be off the ground, off the pavement, or even one corner of it off the pavement. That's when sway bars uh, are most critical because it keeps traction, it keeps control of the car. This car is so uh, heavy and low, um, I would have to be like jumping a railroad track or something like that. I'd have to be going airborne somehow. I'd have to be going off road with it. Uh, even with a, I don't know, a high end collision, I guess, uh, a, a maneuver really, uh, a maneuver on the road on the highway at high speeds. Uh, if you're doing that, I mean, more than likely, you're gonna crash anyways. Nah, I don't know. <laughs> if you're going that fast where sway bars would have either, you know, prevented the crash, uh, them existing, I guess, would have either caused or prevented a crash, you're probably gonna crash anyways. Most people, 99.9% .9 of people don't drive these cars that way anyways. This car handles fantastic without sway bars. You never feel like you need sway bars. Talk to those who do have sway bars, and I believe they say that um, it drives that much more stiffer. That's great for a track, everyday road conditions, a heavy sway bar setup. The thick one, not the one with the uh, from the SL350. They say that that doesn't really do much, but you need actually. Um, I think VVK makes one, but. It's not as popular as people say. Most people do not use them. Most people do not use sway bars on these cars when they do a conversion. And that's just the facts. You all might question my uh, information or my lack of experience with sway bars. See, when it comes to sway bars, I can only go by, by the forums and what sway bars are designed for. Um, I have not driven one with sway bars. I have only driven without. So I can vouch or uh, validate that these cars do handle fantastic without sway bars. It is not an absolute necessary thing. On my SL55, I'm not doing sway bars. I am going coilovers. Considering the Swift Springs, that's not a, that, that's not a must or even required either. That's just something if you want to spend extra couple dollars and, and, and uh, get the best spring that you can it might uh, I might see a difference I might not that's not even guaranteed I mean I always recommend Swift Springs if you're going to track your car racing then again if you're going to push it to its limits then I suggest sway bars so if you're going to do Swift Springs might as well do sway bars I don't know I don't know I don't think I'm going to be driving it to that degree. I just kind of wanted to see the difference of Swift Springs so that I can say, hey, this is what it drives like with Swift Springs. I know what it drives like without it, and it drives great. I would, I would almost say perfect if you get the, uh, the back end firm enough. Don't go too soft. It will bounce a little bit. So now I'm going to suggest 24 in the front. I'm going to suggest 18 in the back. Yesterday I said 20 in the back. Today I'm saying 18 in the back. Yeah, it's a good ride. All right, I'm gonna pull up here, take some uh, video of what this thing looks like all the way around. This ain't mine.
All righty. So yes, the ESL 500 is done. The conversion is complete. What's up, son? <laughs> That's my son, Jordan, coming on from school. You all right? Mm -hmm. Good day at school. <laughs> Boring. Okay. All right. Well, yeah. So we have here the SL 500. It is complete. Hey, Jordan, we're about to run down uh, the streets of the Mueller's uh, speed behind the Speedway. We have a trailer coming to pick the car up. Me and so mommy's gonna follow me down there. All right. All right. So it's done. As I just said. The trailer is on the way from Georgia, about to come pick this joint up. The car is complete and ready to go. So we're definitely gonna have a, um, a happy client, all right? The owner of this vehicle is gonna be astounded. It's gonna be very happy and pleased with the coilover conversion. I'm very happy with the results and how it turned out and the way it handles. He'll be equally happy. All right, so that's it. The car is ready to go. Trailer is on its way to come pick it up. I gotta get the car down there to it, uh, to this big open parking lot where he has a uh, room to load it and exit the premises. Ugh. Okay, so I am now entering the big parking lot where uh, the trailer is coming to pick up this SL500 for the customer and shipping it back to Georgia. So we found a big parking lot close to the house where I can get it loaded up no problem. He could take it on back. So I just sit here and wait for him to arrive. Coil over complete. Silver's Neomax. The best coil over suspension option that you have for this vehicle. Reasonably priced, the most effective. An adjustable coilover suspension from Silver's Neomax on all R230 models. This is great, a great option. Great option. You see the results. Looks good. Looks good.